Welcome to the celebrated nightly news of Calaveras County. My and name beyond. is John. Oh, and beyond, and yes. And beyond. You know, Bob's got to fix lighting. Look at oh, that. Oh, no. I Bob's actually like got... that better. I like when I'm not so light and the light's not blaring on me. I have like a big pasty. Yeah, but. Kind all... of, kind of like my chin and neck are touching. But all of your fans are. My f oh, yeah, I have yeah, so many fans. People can't <laughs> see, up. so I, I John, Bob's got to fix no, that. No, that, that looks pretty good, yeah, John. I like, no, yeah. I like it that way better. I know. Fine, Otherwise, my face, it's, this lighting in here makes it look like my neck is hooked to my chin. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, what? <laughs> and it's not. So, anyway, tonight is Tuesday. Tonight is government night where John tells you about all the exciting government me meetings he went to today. Um, he'll be back on to let you know about all the happenings at the Board of Supervisors meeting today. That was a big one. There was lots of things that happened. One of the things that topped the agenda was they did eliminate the CDA department, correct? Yeah. They did. They eliminated the CDA department altogether. So there would no longer be, uh, Mr. Taylor gave his resignation today. So they decided to, they voted on actually eliminating the, the department. They didn't feel they had the need for it. It would actually save them quite a bit of money due to tough, tough economic times as it is. Um, John can tell you more about that in just a minute. I wasn't at the meeting. I haven't really had a chance to read the stuff he put up on the meeting. But as we speak right now, I'm, it's probably over yeah, right now, but there was a Murphy's Town Hall meeting Kim tonight. just decided to start a, the stuff that she didn't attend. Yes, exactly. Right? And that makes it easier. There was a Murphy's Town Hall meeting tonight, which Victor is attending for us. Um, and this was a town hall meeting on a fire, on fires and evacuations in the Calaveras County area. That was also, and it was also the annual uh, Murphy's Community Club dinner, wasn't it? It's a big meeting. Big this meeting is a tonight, big meeting. Yes. So Victor is at that, so we will have a scoop on that. Probably, if I know Victor, it will be tonight. What do you I think? Hope. He's, <laughs> he's just, he's just ready to go. <laughs> That's good to see. Um, so anyway, John, go ahead and talk on your board of soups. Well, Lots let's of stuff. see. Wallace Lake Estates, C CDA. What else? Now, this is a little bit of the rundown. Um, they did vote to eliminate the Community Development Agency. Um, this has been a controversial one. Um, there's some people that believe that a Community Development Agency could work, but that it should include more departments than just building and planning. Uh, some people we spoke to that says if you go to some adjacent counties, uh, or some counties down in the Valley, or even the Amador County was one of them, where they did have a CDA um, position, but it was basically a little more of a one-stop shopping. Okay. CDA planning. Rather than, and I think it, with the uh, economic times right now, it probably is a smart move to eliminate it because there's just not the volume of work mm -hmm. to warrant it. Mm -hmm. uh, on paper, they can save the uh, the CDA executive director position was it, or the department head position was with Benny's and everything else was about 171,000. Uh, the net savings will not be that much okay. because there's got, but some other things, but. There will be some significant Because we will have some other employees to get that job now, correct? Um, no, we'll go to the two department heads. Okay, okay. So they'll so get planning more work. And okay. So, okay. Uh, but also, um, it's been a, um, and the other kind of is a issue that ties into it is the interim ex interim director of the Community Development Agency, John Taylor, dis did submit his resignation. And one of the reasons was, is not that it was dissatisfaction. He was yeah, he, he was, was interim fine. anyway. He came in to kind of evaluate, his, didn't he? And one of his recommendations mm -hmm. would be to maybe eliminate his position. Uh, yes, so, exactly. <laughs> and the other one and, and was... So he did recommend to eliminate his position. Huh? Yeah, and the other one was that... Um, he in his retire because he's re he's retired so he's a retired mm -hmm. dad and so one of the things he can only work so many hours a year mm -hmm. without screwing up his retirement yes and I I think I'm gonna try to do that because if I we're probably never gonna have than, retirement so if I work more than, doing than the news uh, so many hours a year <laughs> it'll mess up my retirement so anyway no um, so that was one of his things I believe he was limited to 900 and some hours per year anyway mm -hmm. so um, uh, so he figured it was in some ways easier and cleaner if he stepped aside now as they're looking to fill the planning What's director's position every time you come on the news. You put me to sleep. 
I'm sorry, but it's yeah. like every no, time I'm you just you don't do this when we're talking. Besides, we're in front of the, we're not in front of the camera. What's up with that? I don't know. You're not even reading, and you're yawning. Well. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> all right. So that is um, so the stepping out. We have heard scuttlebutt on who um, you know they are looking at some people for interim uh, planning, planning director. Um, have you heard who that might be? Not yet, but we did. We've heard rumor though. We have heard rumor, and we did see did see um, activity on that rumor too. So we can't talk about it yet. Not yet. We can't even say who we saw. No. Well, other people might. Okay. Okay. All right. But there is maybe something in the works for a uh, planning director. Uh, the other big item on the agenda today was Wallace Thirsty. Lake Estates. Uh, Wallace Lake Estates has been is a project that was already approved, done, you know, ready to go, and then there was health problems by the or by who? The then owner of the project. Okay. Uh, it has been recycled to the existing developer of where the existing. Um, it's a little convoluted, in fact, that the developers, part of their par uh, things are in bankruptcy now, okay. but there's a development company that is not, that okay. is over this project. Okay. Basically, it was, they wanted to see more work done on an environmental impact report on water issues and possibly sewer issues as well. Supervisor Tryon had issues with the type of sewer system that is out there now. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of a hybrid system, so it's basically all the um, homes out there still have, say, a septic tank, mm -hmm. but no leach fields. Okay. They kind of have community leach okay. fields, okay. but still periodically they do need to get solids mm -hmm. pumped. Okay. And one of the concerns that was brought up today is, right uh, as of now, there is no place in Calaveras County to dump uh, solids. septic solids. <laughs> So, for example, uh, companies like Foothill yeah, they have to travel uh, and the area. also down, uh, Cooper. down at Cooper, they, they end up the having to travel to, to the solids. Bay Area to dump <laughs> their solids. There has been rumor that uh, CCWD is working on a facility in county where they could accept solids. solids. All right. Um, but that's not as of yet, and that's not exact. And some of the, um, and this is one where Supervisor Thomas and Supervisor um, Toffinelli were definitely for the project. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so it's just been postponed then. Not really. They okay. sent it back for EAR. Uh oh. Uh oh. They oh, sent dear. it back for. You're an embarrassment, job. <laughs> In more ways than one. You're embarrassing yeah. my career. Yes, you're, in more, your broadcast career. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, embarrassing in more ways than one. But anyway, um, it was sent back and the developer has until um, February 17th or 19th to decide whether they want to do the EIR mm -hmm. or they're going to fund the EIR now. Okay. So if they decide they are not going to fund the EIR right now, then the project will basically go into hibernation and it'll okay. be, they, they, it will be denied. Right. Until somebody ponies up and starts rolling again. Uh, the other big item on the agenda today was pushed back. The um, the old legal access issue yeah. that's been going on and on and on. So legal access, they're getting closer. There was Title a couple couple little wrinkles on that um, Public Works wants rolled into it. The committee. The community committee, the Blue Ribbon Committee, is um, is going to work on it a little bit more. So they gave them two more weeks to come up with the final okay. final stuff. Oh my goodness. You're embarrassing. What? Quit it. So is that all for Board of Soups? Um, we'll have that meeting up later. We'll have the meeting up later. And also CAO Bob Lawton at the end of the meeting did talk about um, some of the budgetary mm -hmm. issues. In essence, that they hope that there is a budget passed by the 1st of February. Okay. Otherwise, it will start affecting locally, will start affecting some of the health and human services, uh, okay. some, of the, uh, okay. some of the county departments. Yeah, so, they haven't started doing any layoffs yet, have they? Directly related to that, there was eight layoffs in the, uh, that uh, took place? In the plant, okay. in the building, but not okay. directly related to that, to the state budget issues. This is one to where they would not be receiving money from the state to fund some of these, so they would have to start curtailing service something as of February 1st, okay. if nothing happens. And okay. he also talked about how 
Um, he and uh, Tuolumne County CAO Craig Pedro did go to uh, Sacramento to do some lobbying mm -hmm. to uh, just kind of talk to their representatives on hopefully getting a budget done. Okay. So that's the high points. We'll have more up later. You can watch all the blow by blow. But it was a long meeting too. What time was it over? Yeah, his meetings go. It wasn't that bad. One, two o'clock? About twelve thirty. Okay. Yeah. It was icy out there today. It was. Very icy this morning and this evening, and actually this afternoon. I actually slipped on a little. You did. Coming back up the hill to pick up my our son from school. Um. I did hit a little. Didn't spin. Just kind of sweat. You did a little <laughs> bit of the. Err. Yeah. Exactly. Driving very carefully down the hill, um, but was in a, of course was in a hurry coming back up. So be careful because tonight about 5:07 p.m. over in Tuolumne County on Little Fuller Road at South Fork Road, and um, there were several vehicles spinning out on ice. And this was at 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, there were no injuries. Um, they did have to call tow trucks on scene. But at that time, even the, the other roads were slip, slip, slick and slip, slick and slippery. So please be very careful. I Speaking don't know. of embarrassing. Yeah. Hey, it's late. You bring your <laughs> wife on the news at 10 o'clock at night. Who does that? Who works all day, all night? Oh. What time did you start this morning? Seven. Seven? I mean, that's only what? It's only 10 now. That's 12. It's like 13, 15 hours already. Yeah. yeah. And I still have another couple more to go. I mean, a few more to go. That's, that's, so use your well, there's 24 about hours one. in a day, right? So, we so that's like, full time. Yeah, that's full time. So, <laughs> yeah. If you so back I work part time. Off. What am I doing complaining, <laughs> so right? You back it off. <laughs> so if I'm stumbling with my words, hours, excuse 12 me. 12 hours a day is only oh, half time. Slave driver. Right? Half time. Yeah, so, so I just work part time. Three quarter time. Fifteen hours a day is what about? Three quarter time. Part time, three quarter time. Okay. We're going to be 18 hours a day. I'm not complaining. I was just slurring my speech. Have some tea. Okay. The City of Angels Camp is requesting proposals for consultant services. The City of Angels Camp is seeking a consultant to prepare the update of the city's housing element. Proposals must be received by the city no later than Friday, February 27, 2009. For a copy of the RFP, call 209-736-1346. The City of Angels Camp is an equal opportunity employer. The City of Angels Camp also extended their vacancy since they have not found anybody yet for their planning commissioner. Um, the planning commissioner vacancy, the City of Angels Camp is accepting applications for planning commissioner. The term fills vacancy which expires June 30th of 2009, at which time the appointment process will begin again to fill the three-year three, three -year term. Residents of Angels Camp wishing to apply for planning commissioner may pick up an application and overview of the pos position at City Hall, 548 South Main Street in, in Angels Camp, or contact Mary Kelly at angelscamp.gov, dot gov, not gub, <laughs> stipend $50 a month for each meeting. There you go. So, if you're, you make 50 bucks a month. Yes. Do you see this marriage workshop that's coming that's up? That's double been what we make. I know. <laughs> I know. There's a marriage workshop coming up, free to the community. We've been asked to post this almost every day because it is free. And from what we hear, there are a lot, lot of marriages struggling due to a hard economic times. And one of the things we want to say is that the past several weeks, we've been attending a trial run. And it is, I would love, just like to say that it's been amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, we right? To, we actually need to go to <laughs> this. Hasn't it been just amazing? Oh, yes, just, I mean, maybe we have so much time to go to America. The, transfer, the uh. transformation in our relationship has just been just stunning, <laughs> right? Isn't that been the... Okay, marriage workshops so offered free to the community by marriage and family therapist Michael McCraddock. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors about this free opportunity to develop better relationship skills from an expert marriage and family therapist. How to Stop Making Marriages Work meets on four consecutive Friday nights starting on February 6th. Michael McCraddock and Harmony Lifehouse presents this four-part session in the first of the Advanced Life Skills Training Series, bringing family life training for healthy marriages and parenting to the community. Parenting? This actually would be good, but I'm sure you're, you're see, the thing we the thing about this is we won't be able to go, and you know why? Why? You'll be, you'll be doing basketball. What, Friday <laughs> so night? So that comes ahead of our marriage. Friday night? Yes, Friday nights. 
You'll be doing basketball. Well, I mean, you gotta have your priorities. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, and so. I'm I'm working on a chef chat. And that's here. and We're that's and that's a... usually movie night for me. So you know what? We we don't have time for those marriage classes, right? Uh. <laughs> Girls' movie night for me while John's doing basketball. Um, so if you are interested, um, they start on February eighth. You see, they're on February eighth, February sixth. I'm sorry, thirteenth, twentieth. I can't, I can't read my own writing, John. You can't. It's probably too small. You well, it's glasses. Four, four Friday consecutive nights, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Registration is 6.45 to 7. Location is Harmony Lifehouse next to Pizza Plus in Murphy's. Cost is free. Limited child care by advanced reservation. Call 209-728-8794 for more information. Not full child care? Just Not full child care. Limited? Limited. Huh. We have a couple of important meetings coming up this week. I guess the other question is, do you have to attend the meeting to get the child care? Or do you have to go to get the marriage counseling? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can they send you a book and read it or whatever? I don't know. So you were too busy to even to go to things like that. Tomorrow night there is going to be, as I mentioned last night, a Cosgrove Creek Flood Damage Reduction Meeting in Jenny Lind. Right? Tomorrow These evening at 5 p.m. Um, the Bret Hart Girls Basketball versus Linden tomorrow evening. Issues are at always... At 6 p.m. at Linden. Okay. What? Girls, the issues are always bubbling up at those meetings. Community Parks meeting in Copperopolis tomorrow evening. It's a big meeting tomorrow night. Um, okay, you want to talk about anything, John? Me? Mm -hmm. You know, Grayson took your chicken to school today. He took the rubber chicken? He took the man. I stuck it in his backpack and had to show it, showed it to the class. So he, so he qualified. Did he take a picture of it? I don't think so. So remember, it is take your no, rubber. He snuck it without asking. It is. Did the teacher say anything? No, but he. No, I'm surprised. But anyway, a couple of other interesting things to talk about are Obama's cabinet. Who's in it and where they come from? Did you see that? It's a very nice piece. Provided by Donna M. Stevenson of Pacific West Financial. She sent in a a list of uh, position by position of who is in Obama's cabinet, what their qualifications are, where they come from. Um, pretty pretty nice for her to do that for us. A couple of sad news. A couple of businesses are closing. Yes. One in our area, Angels Camp. Heard today they are Prudential. Prudential, California Realty, the big Prudential building, the corner of uh, Highway 4 and 49. The Prudential uh, office will be closing and they will be consolidating operations to their Arnold office and also to the Twainhart and Sonora offices. Very so to see. Oh, yeah. uh, it is, it's tough to see. Um, Brand new, beautiful building. Mm -hmm. um, the Lumber Yard Restaurant and Brewery in Tuolumne County, which used to be Snowshoe Brewery, closing its doors next week. Um, very sad news. I don't like to hear that. So, um, anyway, set Senator Dave Cox sent us. Uh, yes, he a did. Press release today. And he sent us a handwritten press release, right? Just us. Nobody yes. else. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh -huh, I mean, there was. I mean, I look. I looked easily on that email to make sure that he there said, was no Kim. other ed addresses. <laughs> yes. And if there were, we're not going. Look, no. right? Yeah. Proposed septic tank regulations may affect pocketbooks. Now, one of the things is they are looking at. Um, man, we are not doing very well in publishing Chef Chat. Oh, Here, that's all right. Gonna, we'll talk later about Chef. We probably don't have enough right. time to talk about it tonight anyway. Okay. I was going to try to have, have you... Chef Chat up tomorrow night. We have a couple of new and exciting shows. We do. From our famous um, Chef James. And we were going to try to get one up for tonight, but alas, you know, it's it'll not be up to be. tomorrow because okay. I've already got the recipe. Um, interesting thing is they're looking at doing some state regulation of septic tanks, which means that if you have a septic tank on your property, every five years you would be, uh, we require a inspection with a fee of $325. Oh now, the other thing was um, homeowners with septic tanks within 600 feet of bodies of water already designated as impaired would be required to have a qualified professional determine whether their septic system is contributing to the impairment. If so, retrofit of the septic system with supplemental treatment would be required at an estimated cost of forty-five thousand thousand dollars. Wow! Um, so, and one of the things on this is uh, one of the things that uh, Senator Cox's office is uh, against this is that for rural counties, I know we have had some isolated incidences 
uh, where some homes have um, on steep slopes have been having problems on the causing problems on the McCollumy River watershed. But by and large, Calaveras County and most rural counties have not had issues with septics because there is typically your homes are not as densely packed. Um, so this is one that has it. And from his office, if he's listening to anything, is regulations required by law that was um, passed in 2000. As I oppose the original legislation, I must also oppose the proposed regulations by the State Water Resources Control Board. As I say in a recent letter to the Water Control Board, the one-size-fits-all approach of this legislation and proposed regulations will not work well in rural communities. They will place an excessive burden on homeowners throughout the state. So, um... Residents in rural communities are already feeling the financial pinch of the downturned economy. Overburdening home, homeowners with more regulations will require them to spend more money they don't necessarily have is not the right approach. Septic tank spillage has not been a problem in the 1st Senate District. Um, if you would care to talk about, um, in, submit an email. Residents. If residents would like to submit an email to comment on this, they I can send one to... Uh, submit comments is to ab885 at waterboards.ca.gov. And there's also, if you look on our site, there's also a mailing address if you want to send one by snail mail. Did you see that DMV online transa transactions increased 15% during 2008? Transactions? Trans okay, John. If they're just really painful. We actually paid a couple of our... Uh, vehicles on, online. Remember, it was very easy. We did, it was. You very online, yeah. pay with a credit card, and yeah. you get the, the stickers in the mail. But that um, was a but that was a slip, see? Because instead of transactions, they were transactions. Yes. So, if they were painful... Why? Okay, it's late, right? Then they would be... Gosh, at least I'm not having, don't have a yawn in. They so. would be aching. The California Department of Motor Vehicles announced today a significant increase in customers using DMV online services. In 2008, more than 7 million customers used online DMV transac transaction services. Transactions. An average of 15% over 2007. Customers conducting DMV business online save time, energy, and it is good for the environment. Kind of like the pine tree. And save a tree, visit the pine tree, right? And there's less action. Yes, you don't have to... So, so the pine tree is good for the environment. Hey, there's a good slogan for you. We are. Save a tree. Yeah, save a tree. Go to the pine tree. Yeah. Right? We have all the news, the current news. No trees were harmed during this broadcast. No, no trees were harmed. <laughs> some of President our, to Muslim world. Americans are viewers, not your enemy. Some of our viewers may have been harmed. Yes, they may have been. Did you see that? I got this off the White House website this yes. morning. Um, President Obama, in his first interview with an Arab television station, uh -huh. President Barack Obama offered a bold change to America's relations with the Muslim world. My job is to communicate to the American people that the Muslim world is filled with extraordinary people who simply want to live their lives and see their children live better lives. President Obama told all our Arabia. My job to the Muslim world is to communicate that the Americans are not your enemy. And this came from the White House website. So that was... Definite change in tone. Yes. Um, and at the same time, interesting thing where the change in tone um, is refreshing to many, many people. Mm -hmm. uh, they did, they are looking at pumping up operations in Afghanistan. Um, oh, they to, are? Um, yeah. To what? Help prevent it from sliding backwards. Okay. So I hear I hear Rush Limbaugh and Barack Obama are at it. Yeah, I don't think they're I don't think they're buds. <laughs> I don't think they're friends. <laughs> don't think they're buds. Um, Barack Obama is telling people not not to not to watch his TV show, or his no his radio listen to his yeah, radio show. because I think Rush uh, what a Rush is um, um, Rush Limbaugh's comments was that he wanted to see Barack Obama fail. But that wasn't actually what was said. No, I looked a little bit more, and I think some did of that you, was taken out of context, and the fact that. If his policies going forward in, from the Republican side of the aisle, they were looking at if the more of the socialization of, mm -hmm. more of a lot of the areas it's all you've done. Nothing more just, you can do. My battery must have right. left. Um, I'll get plugged in. See, look, you didn't so, plug it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, 
So yeah. anyway, Rush Limbaugh and Barack Obama are not the best. They're not like this. They're not, they're I not think BFFs. There are some, I <laughs> think there's some differences in opinion there. Yes, there are. Yeah, so that's, uh, there we go. Anything else you have to talk about, John? Oh, let's see. Bill Clinton made millions uh, from, for, from, from foreign sources. An idol put uh, Fox, Fox Network in first place for season. And um, Pelosi was upset that birth control was, was removed from one of the stimulus plans. It was? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, you know, I mean... She wants it to be paper by the government, you mean? Is that what that means? She wants people to be happy. So if they get free birth control or something that would keep them... Right? And there's some countries that are going to start giving, um, I think even Mexico was one of the ones, is they were going to start giving men over 60 free Viagra. Oh, good grief. That's and on so that important. note... We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs> if you dare, stay tuned. <laughs> good night.